The Salt Lake Institute of Genealogy will celebrate its silver anniversary in January 2020. Elevate your genealogical education to new heights. At SLIG, you will learn from the field's top professionals, obtain in-depth instruction, network with respected experts, consult with successful researchers, and research at the Family History Library. Registration opens July 13, 2019 at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. We've asked the course coordinator to tell us a little bit about the course to help you decide if it's the right fit for you. Karen Stanberry is the course coordinator for meeting standards using DNA evidence, research strategies. Keep watching to learn more about her background and the course. Good morning. My name is Karen Stanberry, and I'm very excited to be teaching this, all, coordinating this all new course uh, for SLIG 2020 called Meeting Standards Using DNA Evidence Research Strategies. A little bit about me. I am certified by the Board for Certification of Genealogists, where I serve as a trustee for that organization. Uh, as part of those duties, I chair the Standing DNA Committee. Uh, last year, I chaired the committee that drafted the new DNA-related standards over the course of several years and was heavily involved in the process of adjudicating the public comments that came in uh, before we submitted the final version of the DNA standards for approval. I teach, I coordinate advanced DNA courses at all three institutes. I've been teaching at SLIG for many years now. I also teach as an instructor in the institutes and I am a national lecturer on topics usually related to methodology and um, specifically using genetic evidence to solve genealogical problems. How long have you been working on genealogy and how did you become interested in it? I've been interested in genealogy since I was in high school. I was one of those people who was introduced to Roots in my senior year of high school. And Roots completely captured my imagination and I, it resonated with me. Um, I immediately, once I discovered Roots, went and interviewed all my great-grandparents. Um, I had the good fortune to know most of my great-grandparents as, as an adult. And I also had oodles of great-aunts um, that lived on one particular hill in my birth town, Burlington, Iowa. There were so many great aunts living there that as a kid I called it the ant hole. So I went to Ant Hill. I went to interview all these old people and capture their memories. Um, uh, in my mid-20s, I found myself unemployed, and so I took a local community college course where I learned about things like census records, and family group records and so I decided to create a bunch of family group records and went to my college professor's basement to run them off on a as dittos on a mimeograph machine and then kept a notebook when I interviewed all my old relatives completing um, family group records although I didn't have very many sources. Um, my daughter, fast forward, life gets in the way. My daughter went away to college and I wanted to keep from being a helicopter parent as much as I could. And so I dove back into genealogy and now we had the internet and I stumbled upon an article written by Elizabeth Shell Mills um, uh, calling into question the research strategies of Alex Haley and the research findings of Alex Haley and his results. And of course, my genealogical soul was crushed. And I said to myself, well, who is this lady, Elizabeth Schoen Mills? Um, so I committed to trying to learn more about uh, serious, what I would call serious genealogical research and took what I thought would be my trip of a lifetime, one time trip to Salt Lake City on a National Genealogical Society 
uh, research trip and there I met Shirley, Shirley Wilcox who encouraged me to find a quote genealogical buddy, a genealogy buddy. And so I stalked Harold Henderson on the internet for a while and finally got up the nerve and sent him an email and asked, would you be my genealogy buddy? And Harold, being Harold, said, sure, I'll be your genealogy buddy. And he encouraged me to meet with him at my first National Genealogical Society conference in Cincinnati. So I went and met with him and um, that was, that, that the rest is history. Uh, I quickly I enrolled in Progen. I applied to get a seat in this mysterious Elizabeth Schoen Mills Advanced Methodology course um, because I had to see how it is she was able to blast a hole in my beloved roots. And then six months later, I took Tom Jones Advanced Methodology course. In 2014, I was at SLIG. At that time, they had the professional, the APG Professional Management Conference. And I was at the same time, and I was going to go to the library to work on my portfolio, but it was snowing like crazy. And I didn't want to walk the walk to the library. So somebody suggested I go hear CeCe Moore talk about DNA. I knew absolutely nothing about DNA. And I went in, and I could, I immediately, could see the power of using DNA um, to solve genealogical problems. The, the big issue for me was that I hated science. Um, I did everything I could when I was a student to avoid, to get my credits for science without having to take a lab course. Um, but I could see the power, so I enrolled in the very first uh, institute at GRIP on using DNA for genealogy, and six months later took the advanced DNA course at SLIG. And ever since then, it's been my passion, my love, my great joy. Um, and I still hate science, but it's not really science that you need to know to be able to do, to use genetic evidence in genealogy. It's logic, and I love logic. Tell us about your prior SLIG experience. Well, like I said, my the first time I went to SLIG was in my first year of trying to learn more about genealogy, and I took Tom Jones' advanced methodology course. So having both Elizabeth Show Mills and Tom Jones in the same year on advanced methodology um, set me on a a great path. Every year after that, I took a SLIG course. I've taken all kinds of SLIG courses. And in about 2000, I'd say 2015 or so, um, I started teaching at SLIG. Um, I've had, I've coordinated my own course. Um, this next year will be the third year of coordinating a course at SLIG, um, DNA courses, although I teach in a lot of courses. Um, and I also teach some, lec do some lectures in the SLIG Academy. And this year I'm really excited to be the DNA consultant in one of the lectures, lecturers for the Advanced Practicum DNA. So that's coming in the fall and I'm really excited about that. What course will you be coordinating? Well, next year, the course that I'm coordinating and is an all new course that I'm really very excited about. It's called Meeting Standards Using DNA Evidence Research Strategies. Uh, that is my pug in the background snoring. So if you hear that noise, just know that she's enjoying her nap. Um, this course, Meeting Standards Using DNA Evidence, has a very similar title to the course that I've been coordinating for two years now, but let me make it clear that it's a very different course than the one that I've been teaching the past two years, which was Establishing Proof with DNA. Establishing Proof, the previous one was a lab-based course. This course, Meeting Standards Using DNA Evidence, is a uh, is all case examples, it's all case studies. And you don't even need a computer if you want to take this course, which is very unusual for courses that I teach, although bring your computer if you wanna follow along in the syllabus material. Um, it's an advanced course. It is unique in that 
Um, it's based totally on research strategies and logic. It's all case studies. Some of our community, some of the best genealogists in our community are going to be presenting their own case studies, working with genetic evidence. Um, and what they're going to emphasize in this course is the research decision making they had to do along the way. At every point in our research process, we reach a, a, a place where we could do option A, B, C, or D. And um, we have to decide which way to go. And so this course is using um, the genealogical proof standard and the new DNA related genealogy standards to guide the decision of, of where what the next step will be in the research process. Um, so the emphasis is, is not the final result, the emphasis is the research process. And I um, believe that it's going to teach a lot about how to apply the new DNA related standards. So it's practical application of the new DNA related standards as well as the other standards that we use to guide our research decision making. It's all about strategy and logic. What are the main topics covered in the course? Well, this course is designed to deconstruct and study the researcher decision strategies and methodologies employed in the correlation of documentary and genetic evidence to provide proven genealogical conclusions. Um, so we're going to dissect all these familiar skills that genealogists always use, but with a DNA twist. We're going to be talking about make, crafting a meaningful research question, developing and refining research plans, mining for evidence, correlating evidence, sorting and grouping evidence, analyzing with logic and inference, testing hypotheses, resolving conflicts, reporting of findings, and writing clear proof arguments detailing the evidence and research reasoning to support the conclusion. Um, this, so each lecturer is going to answer some of those questions as they illustrate their own research strategies. So it's an advanced course. Um, the prerequisites are, are hard. They require previous completion of the following full week institute courses at any genealogical institute. We want you to have had a course in advanced methodology, not advanced DNA necessarily, but advanced methodology. So any of the advanced methodology courses at SLIC or at the other institutes qualifies for that, including mastering genealogical proof. We also want you to have completed at least the beginning course uh, about DNA and DNA inheritance. We're not going to cover DNA inheritance or inheritance or any of those um, basic uh, principles for being able to accurately interpret DNA evidence. Um, so we want you to have completed that. Any beginning DNA course at any institute will um, fulfill that requirement. And then an intermediate level DNA course, um, you could qualify for this one by taking the course that I taught the past uh, two years, Establishing Genealogical Proof with DNA, or the Intermediate DNA course at IGHR, or Chromosome Mapping, or Advanced DNA at GRIP. Um, Blaine is also offering an advanced DNA course this summer at IGHR, and if you don't have any of those, opportunity is there because you could enroll in the SLIG virtual DNA practicum, which we're going to offer in the fall of this year, and that will meet the prerequisite for the um, more advanced DNA skill levels course. If you don't meet the prerequisites, you can submit a written work sample for consideration that correlates genetic and documentary evidence to establish a conclusion meeting the genealogical proof standard. Um, so the, let me just tell you who the, who the lecturers are because, and what their topics are going to be, because there's a lot of diversity of topics and the lecturers, I'm so lucky that they agreed to teach in this course. Of course, I'm going to be teaching in it, but also we have, let me get back to my 
well, I'll do it this way. We have Tom Jones, uh, who's going to be teaching in it, several different cases he's going to be providing, as well as um, a lecture on research habits. Uh, uh, we have Rick Sayer, who's going to be presenting a case about using targeted testing to negotiate pedigree collapse. Tom is, is presenting a case about ambiguous evidence and how to be able to interpret ambiguous evidence. Um, Angela McGee and Melissa Powell are going to be uh, lecturing on building a proof of parentage that could be useful in a project such as a kin kinship determination project if you are seeking certification. Building a proof of parentage, Angela is going to talk about a Mormon pioneer and Melissa is going to show how you can identify an Irish townland by using clues from genetic evidence. Uh, Catherine Damaris is going to talk about a 18th century Chester County, Pennsylvania family um, and that the record is proven false, but they, the descendants share DNA. So she's going to be resolving some conflicts in that case. Um, I'm going to discuss my chapter in the Advanced Genetic Genealogy book in more detail, talking about the research decisions and the strategies used for that fictional case. David We Met is going to talk about um, using deconstruct and recombining immigrant methodologies, documentary evidence, and genetic evidence. He's going to be using autosomal DNA and Y DNA to prove the parentage of a poor French Canadian immigrant in Vermont that begins with an 1805 birth in Quebec. I'm going to talk about building a client research report that incorporates genetic evidence and that case is going to be drawn from documentary sources in Chihuahua and Durango, Mexico from the 1750s to the 1920s. I'm also going to do a lecture, a case example of a research report to self for one of my adopted second great-grandmothers, who I don't know her uh, biological family yet, but I'm going to show how I write the research report to myself as I go through the process. Um, Tom is going to talk about the decision-making he has to use to decide how to take a mass of data to structure a useful proof argument, a written proof argument. Um, that's focused of the children of a Revolutionary War veteran in New York State. But Brenda Garrett Nelson is going to talk about how she used genetic evidence to um, support a family's oral history regarding the identity of an enslaved ancestral couple in South Carolina. Um, we're going to talk about creating a focal study group that I have to do to solve a Stansberry case I, that I haven't talked about much. David Rencher is going to talk about identifying unnamed individuals, two freeborn mulattoes, using a research plan incorporating genetic evidence. Um, he's going to deconstruct the case study to align and correlate DNA results and fragmentary records for African-American families beginning in 1812 in Virginia and North Carolina. Um, Melissa Johnson is going to do um, use genetic matches to hypothesize an immigrant's European origins if that begins in 1890 in Pennsylvania and ends in the 1860s in the Kolo region of Poland. Um, most of your instructors are all going to gather together to answer your questions in the School of Hard Knocks, so you have an opportunity to ask any questions to one of your instructors as a panel. And then I'm going to cover proof of parentage with conflicting evidence, which was my KDP for certification, but that was done several years ago, so now I'm going to take that proof that I did for my KDP and expand it using genetic evidence to identify um, additional ancestors and extend the pedigree um, of the case that I used for my KDP. What I want to say is that this class, all of the case examples are useful for any of the three elements for um, certification uh, 
for, from the Board for Certification of Genealogists. We're going to be discussing proof of parentages, which you could use in a KDP. We're going to be dis discussing cases that could be useful as case studies in a KDP. And we're going to be talking about research reports, which is also a requirement for the Board for Certification of Genealogists. Um, all of the instructors who are teaching in this course are certified genealogists um, and very familiar with the requirements for certification. Who would benefit the most from this course? Well, this course is really designed for people who have a solid background in documentary um, genealogical research using documentary evidence and for very, you know, for indirect evidence and conflicting evidence, complicated genealogical brick wall problems. And this course is designed to show how, but teach those researchers how to incorporate genetic evidence into the mix so that it's part of the daily practice of solving long-standing brick walls. This course is not about recent unknown parentage. Um, many times those cases can be relatively easy to solve. This is about problems that we could never solve without including genetic evidence into the mix. Um, so people who are, you know, great at traditional genealogy and now want to get on the bandwagon and incorporate uh, DNA into their research strategies and research planning would benefit from this course. Also, people who are seeking to use genetic evidence for a BCG portfolio um, or a renewal would benefit from taking this course. What basic knowledge should students have before taking the course? Again, we're not going to teach anything about DNA inheritance or any of the basic, the beginning or intermediate topics that are typically taught in a DNA course. We're assuming that people have read that. We're assuming that people have studied mastering uh, the advanced genetic genealogy book and genetic genealogy in practice. Um, we're also assuming that people understand the genealogical proof standard and regularly use it in their daily work and um, regularly use genealogy standards um, to create their genealogical work products. So methodology, traditional genealogical methodology and the genealogical proof standard are just as important in this course as is understanding the beginning and intermediate topics of using DNA. What should students expect to learn by the end of the course? So this course um, is all about research decision making. So what students should learn is how to better identify while they're in the process of researching the place where you stop and consider what your next options are. Uh, the students will learn how to articulate those or write down the best, the next options and then use genealogy standards, uh, all genealogy standards, but especially the new DNA related standards to inform their choice about what their next step will be. Um, so some of these cases I haven't even been solved yet. Some of them haven't reached a proven genealogical conclusion, but that doesn't matter because the value of this particular course is to study the research process itself, to dissect it, to break it down, and to make the best choices along the way of what you do next. What makes your course unique? Well, one thing that we've built in that I'm very excited about um, it are think tanks. Um, we call it DNA Dreamers. Um, several lucky volunteers in the student, in the students, in the registrants, can choose their own real life stuck brick wall case, and they will provide a written summary of it to the members of the class, and then we will participate 
I will lead it and the students will participate in a think tank to help that student strategize their next best steps using all of the things we're learning in class. So the focus discussions help the volunteer, the student volunteer choose the best option um, to get unstuck. Um, I think oftentimes some of my best strategies come from talking about my case with other genealogists and collaborating on that case and this is going to be our class think tank that we will have we will do every single day at the end of the day for people who want to do it. We hope you enjoyed learning about Karen Stanberry's SLIG course meeting standards using DNA evidence, research strategies. Registration for SLEG courses opens July 13, 2019. Check out the website slig.ugagenealogy.org for more information.